Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Clan Mulder has got some new toys to try out, and the Tomb Kings will make excellent test subjects. We have uh, Skaven versus Tomb Kings, of course, and I'll be leading the Skaven forces, and we'll have Nonsense leading the Tomb Kings. So for the Skaven force, what I have brought, I have Throt, the Unclean. He's going to be up on his Brood Horror. He's going to be bringing Creature Killer, Remoldered, and he is also going to be bringing his um, Beast Pack with the Rat Ogre Summons as well. And he's going to have a little Brood Horror to keep him company in his travels for the day. For the rest of the forces, we do have Skaven Slaves for that front line, Skaven Slave Spears, and regular Skaven Slaves for that front line. Then in that uh, secondary line, we do have the Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers, considering they do have fire attacks, so that is very helpful against the Tomb Kings. We have Plague Monks as well. A couple of Gisales, one of which is Nanny Boo Boo Sharpshooters. The, they do have Snipe as well, so they can't be seen unless they get units close by, even if they are shooting. We have a Plague Priest for the casting. We do have Vermintide and Pestilent Birth, giving Clan Rats and Plague Monk summons on the field. We have some rat ogres as well spread throughout the formation. We have a couple of regular rat ogres, and we have the pit fighters of Hell's Deep, who do have berserk, much like the Norskin berserkers. Uh, they do get a nice little boost to stats throughout the course of the fight, as long as they are engaged, and then they will eventually go berserk at the end of that. So we can take a quick little look at that little boost that they get here. So they get plus 22% physical resist and at stage 1, and then they get... 13 melee attack stage 2, and then at stage 3, they do rampage. Uh, so that is a little downside, but they do get some nice stats on top of that. Um, in that back line, we just have some clan rats and some more spears with a slinger here, just to provide a pretty much just bodies for, um, for the most part to kind of wear down the Tomb King forces. Let those Gisales do the work and the roaming Throt and Brood Horror to do some of that damage dealing. Now for the Tomb Kings... We've got ourselves a nice little build here as well. In the tree line, we do have some Hecarin horsemen going to be providing some mobile forces as we do have some uh, the skeleton horse archers as well. So a few of those on overall, a couple on both flanks here. And we do have Cetra the Imperishable. He's going to be on his chariot of the gods, going to be rowing the battlefield, wrecking havoc amongst the Skaven forces. As he does have Dejaf's Incantation of Cursed Blades, he has to, of the Incantation of Protection, and he does have the Wrath of Batra. So, and of course, he does have the Restless Dead Lore Passive, which is pretty much what he, uh, you want him to have anyways, because all the spells are very cheap, so providing a nice little passive healing to most of his forces, very helpful indeed. Now, for the front line, we have some Nehekron Warriors with Skeleton Warriors mixed into their ranks. Otherwise, it's pretty much just going to be Chaff Infantry, though. Um, the Nehekron Warriors, on the other hand, will be able to provide a little bit of DPS. Um, they do do quite well against Skaven. They'll be able to chew through their front lines quite quickly, and King Nikesh's Scorpion Legion do have poison to boot so against um, any of the large targets they'll do quite well indeed especially helping out with most of the other troops but we do have two bone giants gonna be raining some arrows from downtown and Skaven beware but that is going to be the armies for today so let's get things rolling and both armies do approach one another Bone Giants will have that range advantage, at least initially before the Gisales are able to get in range of the rest of the units. But both sides are going to be advancing, and most of these forces are hidden on both sides. But now that the trap has been sprung, the Rat Ogres are going to respond in kind, and are going to switch their position to respond to these Nacron Horsemen. Don't want anything getting into these beloved Gisales. Keep them nice and healthy. While Throt and the Brood Horror trying to get on um, some free charges here, going to be charging right on in to the skeleton warriors get a little hits here and there and then be pulling out before any damage is done and uh, the bone giants are going to be just about to get in to range themselves they should already be in range but the sales have opened up first going to be targeting these bone giants looking to do a little bit of damage their way um, really there isn't a whole lot of good targets for them it's either the bone giants or Setra and they could also target the hacker and horsemen though the rat ogres will have that task themselves um, we have Throt and the brood horde going to be getting on top of the skeleton horse archers going to be shutting them down for the time though we do have some spears and some other units coming in to support and we got a little summon here in that back line going to be mixing things up for the skeleton horsemen getting a little bit of surround off on that front while the rat ogres going to be charging in as they were taking a few 
shots from those bone giants going to get behind those tree lines and those trees can be doing quite good work blocking those shots but those rat ogres are going to be doing a very good work against these hacker and horsemen already taking this unit quickly down to half health and dropping rapidly uh, and the other rat ogres going to be trying to pick off the other units so the rat ogre is doing quite well at keeping those hacker and horsemen at bay for the time being but now Setra is in that front line, drop on that Wrath of Atra, routing these Skaven Slaves. No um, task there too hard for him, as now he is going to be getting right into the Nanny Boo Boo Sharpshooters. But the Skaven Slave Spear is going to be trying to get on top of him and get him nice and surrounded, keep him, him in place, and then allowing those Nanny Boo Boos to get out of that fight. But the Hacker Horseman getting a nice little rear charge into those Skaven Slaves, doing quite well. And a few shots are making their way through the tree line into the Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep. But so far, the Brat Ogres have been able to clean up those Nehacker and horsemen very easily so far and now we do have throt the unclean he's going to be charging straight for cetra the imperishable now looking to finish him off once and for all as he does get a nice little attack on him and he is going to be dropping his rat ogre summon trying to get a nice little surround off onto cetra the imperishable he does drop the Nehru's incantation of protection though very good um, play there giving himself 44 percent physical resist in the process and creature killer is also dropped down so immune psychology in the aoe as well as plus 16 bonus versus large as they do try and bring down um, Cetra on his chariot. But with his mass, he is able to pull right on through, getting out through his own units. But those Giselles can be firing in a nice point blank range, going to be cleaning up shop against Petra as he is going to be taking quite a bit of damage there. But now they will turn their attention to that bone giant already taking that thing down to half health. And, these, and the Nanny Boo Sharpshooters will be pulling out of this engagement here. But so far, quite a bit of Skaven and Tomb Kings on both sides, um, but these Tomb King forces able to really route off kind of the cheap chaff infantry, and we do have Throt the Unclean does route as well as both of these Bone Giants have been focusing him down as he has taken quite a bit of damage, though he did get a remoldered off on him at just before he did route, giving himself a nice little bit of healing, but those shots continuing to rain in, doing some very good damage, and in response, the Skaven force is going to be sending in their Brood Horror, trying to shut down these um, Bone Giants, allowing Throt to return, because he does have another remoldered left to cast and Cetra taking some damage as well but he is going to be uh, running from these rat ogres as they do kind of try and um, pin him down and deal some damage his way but so far the Giselles have been free to fire for the most part throughout this match and they've been able to get some decent damage done to the surrounding forces and we do have some of the skeleton horse archers looking to free up these bone giants though as that brood whore is doing some pretty decent damage to this one bone giant getting him down fairly low but he himself is starting to waver and with both of these bone giants here since they will not rout traditionally uh, that brood whore isn't going to be lasting all too much longer but the rest of the Skaven forces here going fairly well in the infantry engagements as these um, Plague Monks able to um, clean up most of the Chaff infantry that the Tomb Kings have brought and these Giselle just continuing to fire in throughout the fight as we do have Throt the Unclean coming back to the engagements here as he does kind of return from that initial route and the bone giant still occupied so they won't be able to turn their focus fire onto him so you get another summon of clan rats here to muck things up trying to finish off the last of the infantry for the tomb kings as the jails fire in to cetra the imperishable at point blank range doing some very nice damage in the process but we do have those skeleton horse archers trying to shut them down once and for all but throughout the unclean we'll have a thing or two to say about that as he does charge right on in getting into those skeleton horse archers trying to do as much damage as he can before the rest of his skaven slaves are able to kind of get in and muck things up a little bit more and we have some returning infantry here once again trying to get on top to, of these bone giants so of course they do have terror so this unit of skaven slaves in, instantly terrified and going to be running from the field we do have the ushapti summon though going to be dropping down right on top of these warplock jazales going to be shutting them down at least for the time being but is going to be a little too little too late as cetra is going to be taking quite a bit of fire and he does finally dissipate as he falls into the ground throughout the unclean though is uh, sitting pretty good now nice and healthy but that is going to be army losses and the Tomb Kings are going to finally disintegrate into the ground here as the Skaven do carry the day once again. And it is just the Bone Giant left. He is disintegrating very quickly at this point. And that is only a matter of time before he too falls victim, as has the rest of his kin. And that will be all she wrote. So let's take a little look at that after battle report here. 
On the Tomb King side, we have Setra the Imperishable. Unfortunately for him, only getting a, a sub 1,000 in value. Did quite, quite a bit of kills, but that's kind of the thing with the Skaven, is they have a ton of chaff infantry, and so Setra could rack up 300, 400 kills, but he's still not going to be paying for himself. It's going to be very hard for him to do that when he is on his chariot. There isn't a whole lot of very good targets for him. It is still nice to have him on a chariot, though, and especially with the support of the Bone Giants, who did considerably better, getting 1,500 and 1,700, doing a lot of damage to uh, these pit fighters of Hell's Deep as they were targeting them initially, and then, of course, to Throt the Unclean, doing quite a bit of damage his way. Uh, the rest of the forces, the Skeleton Horse Archers, getting some decent value, but these um, Akron Horsemen really falling victim early on to those um, Rat Ogres, not really trading well at all and as for the rest of the infantry the just so far only nothing really did a whole lot of good here um even against skaven slaves i mean you see they've been getting some kills but their value is just so low i mean skaven slaves are just so um cheap themselves and if you take a little look i mean of course none of them do any value but then of course the clan rats starting to get a little bit of value themselves uh, the even the plague bunks though only 379 they're like pretty much the damage was spread out throughout most of the fight but the Gisales is kind of where a lot of that damage came from with 1400 on one and we have 1100 on the nanny boo boo sharpshooters rat ogres did quite well themselves were able to shut down those daggered horsemen as i mentioned before getting some nice bit of value and they were quite healthy at the end of that fight brood horror able to shut down the um bone giants and then the summons were helpful on the plague uh, with the plague priest of course you aren't going to be seeing the damage value from that and throughout the unclean um of course didn't do a whole lot either um so both sides damage was pretty spread out the Gisales were pretty much the big factor in this matchup and the tomb kings just weren't quite able to shut them down i think they really need to be a little more careful with uh, their uh, Nahakran horsemen, because those really were the kind of the key units to shut down those uh, two Gisela units. Um, and But having them getting taken out by the Rat Ogres so early on was kind of unfortunate, kind of allowing them to fire in throughout the course of the fight. And the Bone Giants, of course, really don't trade well into them, considering how spread out those Gisales are in uh, general. Uh, but otherwise, it was a very fun match. I did enjoy the battle, and I hope you did as well. That's all I'm going to have for you today. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good one.